Hi, I'm Walt Wager, and today I'm going to discuss a couple of different ways of mounting wood on the lathe. One thing some people do is to uh, make their glue block out of a solid piece of wood in which they've drilled a 7 8 inch hole and then tap that hole to fit on to the spindle directly. I don't have a, a 1 8 tap but the idea is that the wood when it's tapped will screw directly onto the spindle and become the chuck. The problem with this is that in order for the chuck to be square and steady it has to sit against the back edge of this uh, spindle and that means that you're going to have a pretty good size hole and pretty long tap and then you have to have some relief because the threads don't always go to the the very back of the uh, to the spindle so you would need like a 1 8 inch hole relief and this has to go and sit flat against the back that's a lot of trouble and also wood isn't the best and the easiest thing to tap so there are better ways this is an inexpensive faceplate that I bought from Harbor Freight Tools it has a 1 8 thread for a mini lathe or a midi lathe and I think it costs around nine or ten dollars so these are pretty economical and uh, one of the things that you can do with a face plate is if you're turning something is to, to screw it right onto the piece that you're going to turn and then mount it on the lathe however in this case uh, the piece I'm going to turn is actually quite thin I'm making a top for a bowl so I'm going to need to put some wood between the bowl top and the uh, face plate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small piece of wood and screw it onto the face plate and then glue the top piece onto this. Now in this case this face plate only has four screws And I'm going to screw them into a piece of scrap wood that I've prepared here. And I want the grain to be going side grain, not end grain. So the grain is running this way on my, on my piece of scrap wood. I'm going to use a straight edge. I'm going to use a straight edge to determine that this plate is is flat or or slightly concave. I don't want it high in the middle or it'll wobble. And you can see it's not completely round, but that shouldn't bother anything. So I'll trim it up a bit and check it again. Now it's not high in the middle, it's uh, about a 32nd of an inch deep in the center compared to the sides. So I'm going to take a little bit out more off the sides. Check it again. And I'll take a little bit we're off the middle. I took too much off the sides. Now that's pretty flat right now and not high in the middle. That's what's important. Now on my disc I've determined that the center is about here. I want to put the, the smooth side against the smooth side. And for this I'm going to use CA glue and I put the CA glue, medium CA glue, in a circle on the piece, on the, um, on the cover piece. Back off the tailstock a little bit and I'm going to put some accelerator on the face of the 
glue block and then I'm going to crank them together and let that sit for five minutes or so until that glue is really set. The accelerator will will hasten the process. Now, if I were if I was going to use the piece in the back, the waste block, as part of my top, I would use white glue instead of CA glue. Um, it it has a little more uh, flexibility to it. It's not brittle, but in this case, this CA glue is going to hold this top just fine for turning, and uh, I'm going to cut it off anyhow toward the end. So uh, this is just quicker than white glue. If I were using white glue, I'd let it sit for at least a couple of hours before I started turning. And now I can turn my top. But this isn't about turning tops. This is about mounting wood on the lathe. So I'm going to set this aside for a minute and I'll show you another way to mount wood on the lathe. This is a 1-8 nylon lock locking uh, hex nut and so it'll screw right onto the lathe like this and if you notice one side's rounded and one side's not and the rounded side will go right smack down onto the tight against the uh, spindle stop here. So what I do is buy, you can buy 10 of these things for about a dollar and a half a piece and cut out the nylon insert and when you're, when you're turning them <coughs> you can put a little stop in back of this like this and use your parting tool to cut out the nylon insert. Now I've already cut out the nylon inserts on these. I didn't think about making a video about this until after I had done this. But at any rate, you cut out the nylon insert and then this screws right onto the lathe like this. Now how do you make it into a, a chuck or a lock? Well you glue it into a hole on a piece of wood with epoxy. And once that's glued into the hole on the epoxy, then this becomes a glue block that you can glue a piece onto for turning. In this case, I glued a piece on so I could make threads on the end of a, uh, a tenon. And the nice thing about this is that they're inexpensive, a dollar and a half each, uh, plus your glue, probably 50 cents, and that you can take them on and off the lathe and, the, and when you put them back on they'll always be in the same orientation. So you can, you can bet it's going to run true uh, as opposed to something where if you don't mark it and put it in a chuck it might not run true. So I'm going to show you how to drill a hole and glue this uh, mock nut and make a waste block chuck. So here I have a, a piece of maple, just a waste piece of maple from another project. And I'm going to drill a 1 and 5 eighths hole into that maple with a phosphor bit. You can see my bolt or my nut here fits right down into that into that hole and what we're going to do is to glue this nut into this piece of scrap wood that we just drilled the hole into but before we do take a piece of masking tape put it on the bottom of the hole so that it's sealed so the epoxy doesn't get into the threads of the nut, cut off the excess tape, a 
like that. And push that nut right down in tight into that hole. I can use my vise to squeeze it in. And it's bottomed out nicely in that hole. I want to leave some room so that when I screw it onto the lathe, I've, I'm clearing everything else. And I found that one of these small tubes of uh, epoxy is enough to do one chuck. And if you want to buy it more economically, you can get the larger tubes of epoxy. And I get this at Harbor Freight. Now, I mix my epoxy on a piece of plastic from a kitty litter box. Seems to do real well. I'll squeeze out an equal amount of epoxy from both tubes, the A and the B. And this is quick set epoxy, so you haven't got a whole lot of time to work with it. I've got to get my popsicle stick. I use a popsicle stick to, to mix the uh, glue. You get about five minutes until it sets. And then put the glue in to the spaces between the wood and the nut. Now it doesn't look like it'll run down in there, but believe me it will. And we'll just let that set. When it sets, this is another one I did. This one's not quite as deep. Um, sometimes if I have a little extra leftover glue, I'll go ahead and fill in any gaps that occurred in the last one. But I've never had one of these come out. So there I have uh, two uh, glue chucks, I guess you call them, and uh, they're easy to make, they're inexpensive, and they always line up exactly as you put them on. You can use them over and over again when, when the surface, when you part something off, you just glue another piece of wood to it, and you can use them over and over. You don't have to redo the nut in the hole. Here's a glue block I made earlier with the nut on it. And I'm going to glue an extension on it, a piece of uh, maple. And in this case, I'm going to use white glue because I'll be using this over and over again. I'm going to smear white glue all across the face of this maple. Get it centered the best I can, bring up the tailstock, and use that as my clamp. While the white glue dries, get a paper towel and wipe off the excess. We don't need all this glue around here. And that will set in about an hour and it'll be completely set in 24 hours. But in about an hour we can, we can trim up that outer block and start gluing stuff to it. Notice I did not use any paper between these two pieces. I don't trust paper. I, I believe it's easier just to part it off and um, uh, instead of snapping it off. 
and and that uh, we don't have any any need for a paper joint 